Hey everyone, today I've come up the hills for some photography and I wanted to talk about uh, just a slightly different way of approaching wildlife photography. And usually we think about we think about the animal first, the species that we want to photograph, and then we try and track that down and we try and make some good photos. So today I kind of wanted to reverse that a little bit and actually think first about the habitat that you want to photograph them in. What kind of backgrounds do you want? What, what do you want the image to look like besides the animal in it? When we're out photographing in nature, what's really good for this is to know a little bit about the season, how it changes, how the season changes where you live and what kind of colors you get from the vegetation. So I'm here in Scotland and it's coming up to mid-August. I'm going up to the heathland where the heather is starting to bloom and the hills just have this really nice purpley pink and a carpet cover them. It's still, I think it's still not coming properly yet, but it's, it's just about getting there. So I wanted to start working with this now. I picked the habitat here. This time of year when the heather turns purpley pink and then I choose the species that I want to photograph in it. So obviously then it helps to know a little bit about what species are here. For me right today, I'm thinking I'm gonna focus on red grouse. The grouse are really hard to pick out in this. They just blend right in. I've heard a few, but they've been far away. Hopefully, I'll see some soon. A lot of midges up here. Not really cold, but I just need this, this on for some protection. Okay, if you've been following my channel for a while, you may have noticed that I got myself a new camera bag. So I thought I'd show you guys what I like about this one. So I've been in the market for a new backpack for a while and I really wanted a smaller one. Something I can just throw on my back with minimum to take with me, just the bare minimum to go out for photography and maybe even bring my vlogging gear. So I did a bit of research online and I really, I, I really like this one here uh, by Mindshift. It's the Backlight 18L. So 18 liters bag and it just kind of fits perfectly for what I needed to do. Now I was, I was given this bag but they didn't, they didn't contact me and just push it on me or anything like that. I did some research online, found out this is the kind of bag that I want, and I approached them, and I want to thank Mindshift for giving me this bag, and it has not let me down. I basically use this as my everyday, day-to-day -day bag now, unless I need something bigger with me, unless I, unless I need to take a lot of gear with me, maybe some hides, then I need a big, just a bigger bag. Um, but this allows me to just bring the bare essentials, water, water in one side, and the other side I tend to just put my binoculars and 
right now this allows me to have all my camera gear and vlogging gear as well as actually pack the drone in here today as well and then I have a little sweater a couple of snacks and things like that and that's all I need that's basically what I need for just a day out and very often I carry even less than that and it's just really nice to have a small backpack then so it doesn't so that the bag doesn't get all clunky and heavy in itself I can't believe I left my smidge spray at home all right, let's head for a little bit higher ground. Hope we can get some wind to get out of these midges because they are, they are a killer on the Scottish hills. They're unbelievable, so invasive. I've been out here for hours now and it's not like I haven't seen or heard a new red grouse, but I'm not at anything nearby. It's like they know that this is hunting season. That this is when they come to shoot them. This is the 13th of August and on the 12th of August, they basically start shooting these birds for sport. I know it's absolutely ridiculous, um, but unfortunately that uh, is the state of a lot of upland Scotland today. It has been for a long time. Um, so there's nobody on the hills shooting today. So I do hear a few gunshots, but because they actively manage these moors as well, it's far away. But I've had no red grouse, and it's almost like they know. It's almost like they know that this is the season, this is the time when they get shot. So now they're just putting their heads down and not showing themselves, which is what I want to photograph the most. And as you can see here, the heather. This is the common heather, ling, Coluna vulgaris, whatever you want to call it, is starting to really blossom now. There's been a few other heather species that have already blossomed, like cross-leaved heath is a very pinkish one, and I see a little bit of it still, uh, but not much. And there's a bell heather, which is much more a darker purple, and that's actually my favorite of the heathers but um, it's not so dominant, so that's not going to be the one. It's kind of patchy. You'll find it in certain places, and that's been blooming, blossoming for a while now. But this is what I'm waiting for, and you can see here now that these are starting to really come in, but they're still low. I think there's still loads more to come, so I think these hills are really going to be transformed over the next week or two. So I'm going to be coming back out here and focusing a bit more on this, Focusing a bit more on floating around red grouse, possibly even red deer. So we'll see what we come across, maybe even some other songbirds like stone chats or even the meadow pipit. Species such as the meadow pipit can be really good to photograph in backgrounds like this because the, the bird itself isn't that exciting looking. It helps to get that background and environment you're in, it really enhances it. And really, just to show something different. Uh, and it really, it will stand out a lot more in this habitat when the background is everything is purple as opposed to when the background the rest of the year is pretty much the same color as the meadow pipit. So that could be a good one as well. Uh, but it might not be today, in which case I'll, come back, I'll be back out tomorrow and I'll be uploading this video on Sunday no matter what. So either I'll have some birds I'll have some birds and photos to show after my my days in the hills or it's just going to be a video of me walking around the hills. I'll make my way slowly off the hill but kind of keep looking out and I'll have time, I'll have more time if I want to photograph something on the way. Just as I was coming off the hill here, spot a hen harrier just hunting down the valley here down that marshy kind of grassland down there. All of a sudden it just does its thing where it just flies low, hunts, and it's all over the place and then nose dives into the grass. And it must have grabbed something. I was far away so I could just see it. I couldn't see if it actually grabbed something. But then it sat down, it looked like it started to start to chew on something, tear something up. Absolutely amazing. So I don't have an image from today, but that is something I've, I've been wanting to see up here for a long time. Good to see it. No pictures, but still a good day. I hope we get something tomorrow. So. 
So we're back out in the hills today and still haven't seen any red red grouse, but I got a family of stone chats here calling on the heather. So might even be might even be better actually. Really want to focus on getting these stone chats in the heather, using that as my background and foreground. Really make that stone chat just pop in the frame. So I'm gonna approach a little bit with the male singing right back here like two rocks rubbing together. If you want to learn more about bird songs, uh, learning to identify birds by their song, then I have a video on that. I'll put a link to it. It's a really handy thing when you're doing bird photography to know a little bit about bird songs and how to identify them. I didn't actually see it at first. I just heard it when I was cycling by and I know instantly we got a stone chat here. So that's what made me stop. And now I'm gonna try and get a photo. So amazing. So for these midges that are around my head all the time. Good start to the morning, but one one of the things about lying down low in the heather like this is the midges come right up for you. And when you're down low as well, it's not that much wind, and they just start going for you. So it's a bit of a nightmare, and you just do it in a kind of short bursts of time, and then go up and catch some of the wind that's around. Try and cover myself up with a cap and sometimes a hoodie and stuff like that, but it can get a bit too much every now and then. So, well, this is a great start to the morning. Had a good session with them. I uh, got a variety of shots, nothing like very close, but I'm quite happy with the ones I got. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, my name is Espen. And this channel is all about wildlife photography. So be sure to subscribe, hit that bell to be notified if you want to see more of these uh, kind of wildlife photography vlogs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week.